This is Katie McGuire, and I'm presenting on habitual truancy and evidence-based practices. What is truancy? Um, truancy is when a student is uh, does not come to class or school or leaves the campus without permission. Habitual truant students are students that have missed four days over the period of a month or 10 total days over the period of a year, and those are all unexcused absences. Um, what do not count as unexcused absences are when kids are suspended or expelled. Statistics on truancy. Over 6 million students missed 15 or more days of school in 2013-2014. That's 14% of the student population or about 1 in 7 students. The highest rates of ab absenteeism, which means 3 weeks or more. American Indians or Pacific, and Pacific Islanders are 65% more likely, Black students are 36% more likely, and Hispanic students are 11% more likely than Caucasian students. Non-English learners. 11% of English learners are chronically absent compared to 14% of non-English learners. And students with disabilities are almost 1.5 times more likely to be chronically absent than students without disabilities. Some of the reasons for truancy that social workers should focus on are poverty, mental health issues, or parents with mental health issues, parents who work long hours that cannot provide and cannot provide little guidance, younger students or children of their own to care for, the death, illness, or incarceration of a family member, academic issues, safety issues, social issues, and home issues. Attendance is extremely important. Students who cannot read by grade level by the end of third grade are four times more likely than proficient readers to drop out of high school. A regular attendance can be a better predictor of whether students will drop out before graduation than test scores. Evidence-based interventions. One of the interventions I found, it talked about, number one, thorough assessment of each child's situation and needs. Number two, supports necessary for a child to focus on school. Number three, rewards for improvement, which is a program called CARROTS. Number four, sanctions for lack of efforts, which is a program called STICKS. I would not call them STICKS. I don't like that term. <laughs> This program required students to focus on desired future and how to get there, so forward thinking. Um, some of the examples I gave is touring juvenile detention facilities, touring area jails or prisons, touring local community colleges, and prepare freshman course schedule using college catalogs. Require students to prepare a job career plan and learn about the educational requirements of that plan. Prepare a budget to match the income from a full-time minimum wage job. Essays on career goals or on the student's skills, strengths, and interests and how they might apply to the career. Some ways academic supports, so the way the school can support the student. Tutoring. School sign-in sheets, so students could re be responsible for signing in at the beginning of the day and signing out at the end of the day. Or if they're having problems going to specific classes, they could be responsible for signing into that class and then signing out of that class. Modify school schedule to incorporate classes the student is happier with. Remove the student from the least favorite class or teachers. If they're having difficulties with certain teachers, um, it would be important to move them out of those classes if they can't resolve the difficulties. Modify school schedule to meet students' work or health needs, including a part-time option. Um, if students are having a difficult time making it through the day due to medical concerns and not being able to do that, half day might be more appropriate. Saturday school to avoid losing credit in current classes, or summer school to catch up to the grade level in hopes that kids or students won't, be, won't have to repeat a grade. Alternative learning programs, potentially including residential programs. It's important for students to be connected to the community and to the school. In order to do that, it would be important for them to join a club or a team or uh, participate in an activity within the community so they can feel like they are part of the community. 
ways that parents can be involved. Require parents to attend school with a child. This is difficult for working parents. Um, quickly meeting, well, sorry, weekly meeting with students, parents, and a teacher or school administrator or counselor. And this could be court ordered. Court review hearings with parent participation required um, when truancy court is involved. Family counseling and parenting classes for parents of the student or for teen parents when appropriate. A little bit later I'll talk about parenting with love and logic. Mental health services within the community. Mental health evaluation for the student and or parent. Counseling for the student. Drug testing and substance abuse treatment if substance abuse is an issue. Ankle monitoring if it is a legal issue and community services. Some other options they had, um, consequences positive and negative, uh, alternative sanctions or sticks, again, not my favorite terminology, uh, restrict students' driving privileges, take away cell phones, enforce curfews, um, probation, and Saturday school. And alternative rewards, um, carrots, Gift certificates to local stores or restaurants, tickets to sporting events, recreation center coupons, movie coupons, after school activities or parties, for younger children a trip to the zoo, a reward ceremony, and lots of encouragement. IEP goals for habitually truant students. Here are two examples. In the first example, um, Sean has been absent 23 of 95 school days. Sean will be expected to have fewer than five days absent in the next two months. Objective one, with teachers praise for attendance and home school collaboration daily, by January 31st, first, Sean will have three or less days absent during January. Objective two, with teachers praise for attendance and home school collaboration daily, during February, Sean will have two or less days absent during February. For the second example, Natasha has been absent 23 days of 105 this school year due to asthma and asthma-related illnesses, and she will decrease her absence to 10 days for the remainder of the school year. The first objective. With teacher prompts and cues, Natasha will monitor her breathing using a physician-designated system three times per school day. Another objective. With teacher prompts and cues, Natasha will identify the needs to go to the health suite for a consultation. With a school nurse following a predetermined medical-based system, which may include use of her fast-acting inhaler. Another objective. With teacher prompts, cues, and assistance, Natasha will keep a diary of the three times she has measured her breathing, the time she needed to go to the health suite, and when she has used her fast-acting inhaler. Finally, one of the programs I found that uh, seemed really interesting to me was Parenting with Love and Limits. We've used Parenting with Love and Logic in outpatient mental health, and it's been highly effective. This is for um, kids with truancy problems, and it has three different points to it. The first point is six multifamily group sessions to include group therapy, videotapes, age-specific breakout sessions, and role-playing. On top of that, families would um, receive intensive one- to two-hour family therapy and trauma-based treatment in an outpatient or home-based setting to practice the skills and concepts learned in the group setting. So not only are they getting group sessions, they're also getting individual sessions for their family. And finally, they're receiving relapse prevention. The clinician reads out to, reaches out to the family 30 60, and 90 days after the program is complete to ensure that the intervention is still being practiced appropriately. And this sounds like a wonderful program that we could be using within our schools. Hope this information was helpful for you, and good luck in the schools.